this is basically like putting your body through a mini workout in the morning. So not only are you gonna feel better, you're actually gonna look better. If you have shoulder problems, I guarantee that this is probably gonna be a, a one area you've never thought to work. So messy beard and messy hair can mean one thing and this is my morning routine video and this is dedicated to helping you start your day in the right way through a positive mindset, opening up the body, helping with recovery, helping repair current injuries, helping prevent further injuries and just set you off so that your days start right. Yeah, this is 747. Oh, it's a start position for most people in the morning when we wake up hunched in and like, oh, morning's here. But think about it. If you're on a dog or you see dogs, what's the first thing a dog does when it gets up? It stretches, does that little bit of a yoga pose, doesn't it? There's reasoning behind that. Don't go straight in and start rolling things around. You've been sat in a certain position or lying in a certain position for like eight plus hours, hopefully. You've had a good sleep, but that means everything's not gonna be awake. So you need to start waking the body up. So sit nice and tall, pull in your diaphragm, open up your chest, spread your lats, and then just moving the head side to side, rolling it around and start loosening things up. A few light stretches, a few body rotations, nice and easy, and just shake it out, then get up. By doing this, what we're doing is letting the body know it's awake. We're starting to make the muscles alert and get that blood flowing. What we're gonna do after doing this is we're gonna get up and then get back down and do foam rolling. Yeah. This is not a sponsored video. Um, this was actually given to me by Adam at uh, Next Stage Injury Therapy. If you've watched the videos I've done with him on the rehab, most painful videos, which are funny, but also have some very good reasoning behind them. He gave me one of these to try out, and I can tell you it's from someone called backballer.com. This is not sponsored, but this is a decent piece of kit. because It makes it one stable position, and one station to work from. These come in and out, so you can use them single or double. There's two groove points. So this is basically like giving yourself a deep tissue massage every morning to keep you loose. And if you think about the muscles when you're working them, like a paintbrush. If you take a paintbrush, it's nice and fresh, and then you dip it into some paint and water and it comes out all knotted in together. That's what's happening to our muscles over time as we train. What we need to do is break those bristles apart again to open up the muscle. That's where this comes in. Just before we start doing this, I want to show you, Ken, this is me woken up now. I haven't done anything active too much other than make you try the better nails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of, and what I want to show is that by the time I'm done doing this foam rolling, this body, this body, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> this is how it looks now, kind of just like neutrally and non woken up. By the time I didn't finish this foam rolling, not only are you gonna feel better from it, but it actually gets you a little bit jacked in terms of, it opens up the muscle, fills it with blood, and starts creating that kind of same effect as having a workout. So this is basically like putting your body through a mini workout in the morning. So not only are you gonna feel better, you're actually gonna look better. And a lot of all our morning routines and morning problems are negative mindsets. So if you get do, done with this, the reward of then going and looking in the mirror and seeing that it shaped you up a little bit from doing it, well, that's a great ego boost in my opinion. What we want to do is get on to this with our lower back and upper back on the same point and you ease yourself in. So whenever you're doing this kind of foam rolling, don't go in like super hard straight away. Ease yourself in, find those pressure points, hold it for 10 and then let it ease off and then you're gonna move a little bit, find that pressure point, let it ease off, sink your weight through it and then go from there into just rolling over those points that you've just opened up. And the idea of this, you're gonna do around about 30 seconds to a minute on each area and so this is now hitting my lower back and upper back. And then I'm gonna progress from this into the upper back, which is now the shoulders, scapula, upper back kind of area. So this is now really focusing on the rear delt and I can sink that weight across, get that focus on that point, hold it, give it a little bit of a rock, work that in there as if you're working the thumbs in. Same in the middle, <sighs> raise those hips, drive a little bit more weight through, and then the same on the left side. And the reason I'm putting my hands up is because you can do this and it helps kind of get that knot in the back of the shoulder. Whoa, and already this is starting to whew, get that blood. I'm getting warm. I'm getting warm already, Jay. No sexual yeah. innuendos <laughs> at all in this uh, video. And on to the next one. Somebody please fill my glass up. Hit the switch, let me turn my swag on. This is a really great one. And all we're gonna do, really easy, balance, 
is then focus on the glute and the glute meat. So you can actually find that point again, sit, hold for 10, and then start rolling it out, working your way up and down the back of that glute area. And then obviously you can rotate over, add a little bit more weight. I've got a problem with the glute meat on this side, so I wanna focus on that, really dig it in. Really focusing on your problem areas, but then also rolling out each area as a whole. Onto the hamstrings, very similar. You're gonna bring your weight up, sit your leg across, and then roll those hamstrings out. And one area a lot of people neglect, right behind the knee. There's a real tight point there a lot of people are unaware of, and that can cause some real mobility issues. So rolling that out, and the great thing about these as well, is you can roll on the side of the knee, and it's actually really quite comfortable because you can manage your weight. You can hit that IT band, which makes everyone do this face. Oh! And again, hold it for 10 at points, roll it down an inch, hold it for 10, roll it down an inch. Working your way up and down, the body as a whole. Woo! Obviously I'm switching from left side to right side, then we move on to the front. So a really great way I found from the shoulders is taking a lot of the weight on the opposite side. Sit that shoulder onto the edge of the roller and get these like knobbly bits right in there. And then just slowly work your way along the delt, finding your points, sticking points. I tend to put my hand up across my chest here and then I can come up onto my toes, put a bit, put a bit more weight through, sink it into that pressure point, roll it down and all the time I'm controlling with the right side, keeping that distribution tight on my core oh, and rolling it up and down. Then obviously, if you want to hit the sides of your shoulders, balancing with one hand, use the elbow there, keep that core straight, hips in, and then work those points. Oh, and then even then from there, a lot of the areas that get neglected that people don't think about, triceps. So getting on and just rolling your body weight through on those triceps, you will be surprised at how tight these get. And from here, we're gonna go triceps onto the back muscle, and oh my God, I promise you guys, if you've never done this, this might well be worse than the IT band and the glutes put together. And what you're gonna do is put your hands behind your head here, and you're gonna start sinking this foam roller just into underneath the armpit, and you're gonna feel it, and we're looking to work the muscle that runs all the way down here. There's, you've got a lot of kind of tendons and ligaments down here that get very, very tight. This is the perfect way to loosen them up, but it sucks. So again, this is a great mental strategy in the morning. If you're able to get up and put yourself through this in the morning, the rest of your day is gonna seem so easy. So sinking your weight in, what are you gonna do from here? <sighs> I don't wanna do it. <laughs> <laughs> lift, oh, hips up, and then sink that weight through, oh my God, straight away. And then both hands behind your head and push your elbows out and you're gonna sink that weight right in. It is so, it's, it's like pleasure pain. You slowly work your way down that lat and then back up again into that area. Now, if you have shoulder problems, I guarantee that this is probably gonna be a, one area you've never thought to work. And once you start working it, you're gonna feel that shoulder loosen up. You're gonna have a way better range of motion above your head from doing so. So, oof, give this one a go. One of the biggest muscles obviously means working the quads real easy, but this is another one about finding your points. So you can come up onto your elbows and balance with your back foot, or you can raise the back foot and have both feet up and really drive your weight through. And what this is gonna let you know as you go along, if you're finding you've got no tight points at the top, when you come down towards the knee, like for me here, it's really tight around the teardrop and all that area, that's gonna let you know that you've possibly got some mobility issues around that knee region and that's something to really concentrate on. So when you're doing your squats and leg presses, check your knee positions. Are they both equal? Is one turned out more than the other? Are they both balanced? And again, by doing this, really sitting the weight through onto those areas, we're gonna help improve that mobility around the knees, help loosen up that quad and give us a little bit more mobility in that squat, in the deadlift, and just generally, kind of if you're doing anything that's explosive, sprint work, fight work, it's all gonna help. So major area is kind of done, but a lot of things are neglected are kind of the chest people, because this tends to feel quite nice when it feels tight. People are like, oh yeah, nice chest pump. But again, we've got to realize it's muscle that's tightening up and needs loosening. And this is going to be a lot more painful than you expect, but really easy and real simple one to do. So there's no reason to not. It's simply turn this thing sideways, get that pec down on there, using your hands as if you're doing kind of like the Spider-Man press-ups and just rolling across, but then make sure come right across your sternum, then onto the other side, because oh, 
then you can just do this side to side opening up the whole of the chest getting a little deeper each way when you find those points just hold them kind of that 10 seconds especially in that kind of pec shoulder crossover point and then roll across and what we're doing whoa, by rolling right across the chest this is one of the diaphragms of the body is here which is never really dealt with by a lot of people especially we should be getting massaged here down the sternum to open up this diaphragm of the body so what we're doing by that we're loosening up the chest we're also helping loosen up one of the biggest diaphragms of the body which is again going to help you open up improve like that lymphatic function blood flow and once again the more open we are the more blood flow we have the less chance we're going to get injuries or if we do have injuries we're going to reduce that recovery time and help the body heal and a lot of people neglect is rolling the entire abdomen region and the reason is it feels real uncomfortable but it also feels kind of really nice so you're going to let your abs go really sink your weight down and through and then just push yourself back and forth really rolling all the way up nice and slow up to the top of the abs then all the way down right through to that lower area again you're probably going to hit a bit of the hip flexors and groin at that base lower points lower abs mid abs sink it in and then up to the top and then roll through a couple of times and then go back to sinking in and just play around with it and see where your tight points are and again if you've got tight lower abs and you're feeling the pain there that's probably an indication that your hip flexors are tight that whole area needs loosening up and again that's going to improve any pelvic tilt that you might have any kind of instability in the hips or maybe a lack of mobility in the hips so this is all really important they all go together but just because one part's tight doesn't mean that that part is the affected area having that tight area could be like lower tight abs could be affecting hips position knees it all transfers it's a sling system so just because you hurt in one area doesn't mean that's the only area affected last but not least one area that we all i'm pretty sure neglect other than doing some basic stretching is the groin but that whole groin area Gussing. <laughs> the whole groin area i mean we're talking hip flexors groin lower abs that whole area if we can loosen that off what that's going to do is allow us much more kind of hip mobility pelvic tilts are going to be reduced and these are all things that a lot of people suffer from on a daily basis so we're talking about reduction in almost lower back pain better squatting mechanisms better deadlift drive so a real one that we should be focusing it's easy too we're going to focus on the outer side of the foam roller and we're going to sit it into that groin area and we're going to roll up through into the lower abs so sitting it down you'll immediately feel this when you put it onto the pressure point you'll know exactly what i'm talking about but what you want to start with is have the opposite leg down and what you can do when you get a bit better is to start to bring the other leg up and drive your hips through or keep the leg down and bring that leg up and then let the body weight sink through. So just have a play around. For me, pressure point is right here, kind of on the hip flexors. So I'm gonna hold that there for 10, let it dissipate, roll up into those lower abs. Because if you've got tight hip flexors, chances are you've got kind of either lazy lower abs or also tight lower abs. So then roll up into the abs and relax the abs but also give a little bit of pressure back against them. But what we're not doing is tensing against it. So we're gonna let that foam rollers sink in real deep and work the abs and already that is that is pain and so i'm feeling the pain that i'm feeling now like a pressure pain that that's letting me know that something there needs opening up so then i start working my way back down back into those hip flexors back into the groin and then what i'll do is i'll start getting a nice motion rolling all the way across using my opposite leg almost like a little bit of a spider-man motion to just work it through and this is a fantastic way of loosening up all the hip flexors lower abs and helping you reduce pelvic tilt as well Whew. that's it that's the foam rolling part of the morning done this should take you around about 20 minutes put on something some good music something that chills you out put on maybe a podcast make use of this time so not only are you working the body but you're starting to open up the mind and get you ready for the day ahead so as the morning progresses i progress my way down through the house closer to the kitchen but here's an optional extra that you can add in and this is an ab training mechanism vacuums now you don't have to do these but as part of my morning routine i used to do these all the time and then i got sidetracked by trying to rehab the injuries and that's a silly thing because a strong core usually means a strong body if we have a weak core we tend to suffer from a lot more imbalances lopsidedness uh, inability to work through compounds break through plateaus so this is a vital part of your core training for abs 
So what we're looking to do in vacuums is to work all those internal core muscles. And we're gonna do that by having simply something to put our elbows on, and this is our starting point. And what we're looking to do here is exhale all of that air, literally blow it out as much as you physically can until you're completely depleted. And then you're gonna think about pulling and drawing your abs in and up. So what you're not doing is breathing in. Like a lot of people think it's, it's the exact opposite. We're breathing out all the air to collapse the diaphragm, and then we're gonna pull those abs in and up. You're only looking to hold this for like 10 seconds, and then you're gonna do 10 sets of 10 seconds. That's it. So elbows down. We're gonna blow all the air out. Then we pull in and up. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I can't talk and do it. So I'm gonna breathe out and then in and up. But I'll do it standing so you can see it a little bit. There you go, that's one rep. So we're holding that for like 10 seconds. The reason we're starting down here on the elbows is because it's easier to draw in and up from this position. It's harder to do it from a standing because it takes more control. So you're gonna wanna progress and start on the elbows, 10 for 10. Once you're able to hold those solidly for 10 seconds nice and easy, then maybe start raising up a little bit into a bent over position. And then from that bent over position, once you're drawn in, then stand up with it drawn in and then eventually you'll be able to just do it from standing. So when you're doing things like triceps, biceps, lying on the bench, you're gonna be able to draw that lower ab in. And that's mainly the section a lot of people find a bit of self-consciousness about, like they feel like they've got a bit of a pooch, like they feel like they've got a bit of a belly. A lot of the time, it's just a weak core. And the moment we start strengthening it, it'll flatten off naturally, and you'll start looking and feeling and functioning much better. So finally into the kitchen, and this will be my breakfast if I was gonna eat now. But I'm not gonna eat this for another couple of hours because I do intermittent fasting. And what that means is I do not eat until around about 2 p.m. each day. I'll eat from 2 p.m. until 10 p.m. and in only that window. Outside of that, I'm fasted, only taking in maybe black coffee and water. Now, the reason that this is good is not because it's some super magic, magical technique devised by wizards. The reason it works is because it makes you consistent and makes you think about food, and that's why. So you are starting eating at a certain time and you're finishing eating at a certain time, which means you're going to bed with the same amount of food in your stomach or not, if you're going to bed later and it's digested, and you're waking up in the same condition every morning, which gives you a consistent weight on the scales, a consistent look in the mirror. And because you've got that consistency, it gives you a more positive outlook on life because you're starting to look the same more regularly, you're starting to see more consistent change. So people then believe that it's the fasting that's doing this, when really what it is, is it's just your consistency and your adherence to a set schedule. So with that said, when I do eat, what I'm on at the moment is a high fat diet, uh, but I still like to get my micros in there and I like to start my breakfast kind of light and airy a lot of the days. And that means fruit, a high fat yogurt, put that over the top. And then sometimes you want to get some of those natural flaxseed oils in there and things like that. You can sprinkle these on the top or a little bit of like shaved coconut and things like that. And that's a nice start. And then you can follow that up with either, usually I'll have like a shake or then I'll usually have an actual meal probably about an hour or two hours later prior to going to the gym. And then the day will just roll on as normal following a macronutrient based diet, which we'll cover in another video. But the other alternatives as well with being on the high fat diet is sometimes I will get up, I will have a double cream in my coffee because that tastes hella good. Nice fats in there. I'll follow that up with some Bicky bacon and some sausage and some poached eggs. So for me, the high fat diet works because it's fun. It allows me to have good breakfasts, but still I'm clever and I get my micros in through low impact carb sources like fruits, sweet potatoes, frozen berries, and a multitude of other things like um, some of the ready mashes that you can get from supermarkets. They're kind of a low carb, but they're not meant to be, but they are. So it's all these little tips and tricks, but we'll cover those in a full day of eating video, which you will see very soon. So there you have it. I hope that has giving you some ideas, maybe how to structure your mornings, maybe give some other things a little bit of a go, see how it works. You have to stick with it for at least three weeks. They say if you do anything for 28 days, it becomes a habit. So for those 28 days, stick it out, 
grind it out and get through it and eventually it'll just be what you wake up and do. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button if you like the video. Make sure to subscribe and to hit to get notifications. So you have to go through the subscription thing and then go through the list and say notify me when Lex uploads because you're crap and don't tell me. And that will help me and it will also help you and also share it. Any questions, hit me up in the comment section. I do read them all. And until the next video, I'll give you a boom, baby. We're out. This ain't the